Okay, quick thumbs up, emphasis on quick. Got you. Okay, let's go on and talk about this resolution. The world would be open off with open borders. Let's talk about what open borders are. That's when workers are allowed to move between countries without any restrictions whatsoever. First of all, a point of resolution analysis. This is borders, oh, the world, not individual nations. We're not talking about what effect this would have if America opened their borders alone, but if the entire world and what impact that would have on the whole thing. Let's talk about a couple of quick points. First of all, this is currently done. Within individual nations, there are virtually no border restrictions. Within individual nations, between California and Texas, you can travel without anything happening. And we haven't seen any real bad results from that. But let's look at a couple of points about the quality of life. First of all, the Economist, according to The Economist, there's a study done that proves that $78 billion, the world will be $78 billion richer with open borders. That's because people can migrate from countries where they aren't getting paid very much to countries where they're getting paid more, which makes the world and those migrants a better off. Just to make this clear, it's not just about workers, it's about anyone can migrate from one, per one nation to another nation. So the first reason why I oppose is because this undermines the rule of law. Because if you are in a criminal in one country and you shoot someone, you can just go to another country and you won't be punished. This creates an unsustainable system and where there's no rule of law. Secondly, borders reflect differences. They don't create them. And absent some sort of agreement, the people who, who would move to another country wouldn't necessarily comply with those laws. So, uh, thirdly, this would create a flooding scenario and an impractical seesaw because one country would be seen as awesome and good. And so everyone would go to this country and then that country would have economic strain. And once that country had economic strain, people would exit that country leading to a seesaw effect where one country is good at for some time and then it collapses in another time. And fourthly, this means that countries cannot choose their cultural identity because some cultures are better than others. For example, cultures that do not oppress women or are not totalitarian regimes. And this means that people can, countries cannot choose their cultural identity. Okay, let's talk about these four points. First of all, that it undermines the rule of law. Now, that's not the case because countries can be required to expatriate criminals who have migrated to their country. This is the case in the United States if a citizen goes from one state to another where he's a criminal. Secondly, the idea of the borders reflect differences. This is irrelevant. We see this actually happening in the EU. There's open borders between vastly different countries, but it doesn't see a big problem with that. People migrate from one country to another based on economic opportunity. There's not been any kind of significant problem involving that. Thirdly, the idea of flooding. This is empirically denied. Now, in Micronesia, has open borders with the U.S. And in the U.S., incomes are 20 times higher than in Micronesia. But there isn't a flooding effect because people are fine staying in Micronesia. Like, this just doesn't happen. This is an unrealistic scenario that's not borne out by the empirical data. Fourthly, the idea of cultural identity. Again, this is irrelevant. We have plenty of nations with plenty of different cultures within them, as well as the EU, for example, and there hasn't been any significant problem with this open borders policy. Okay, on the example of Micronesia and how he's trying to negate that, it'll be uh, denied. Again, Micronesia is a bunch of islands. I'm saying that the countries that are next to each other would have this occur. He's providing an impossible scenario. And there would still be this impractical seesaw because some countries would be better off than other countries. And it would just lead to a flooding of, uh, of people into a country. We see this right now with the refugee crisis and people trying to flood into a country and it's tanking that country. Uh, they, he says that the EU denies that borders would reflect differences rather than create them. However, again, although there are different countries in the EU, they have very similar governance structures, which is not the case with other countries that what if you were to open up borders completely, Mexico and Venezuela's government is completely different than the United States government and Brazil's government, for example. Uh, fourthly, saying that you cannot choose your own cultural identity. Uh, countries want to be able to have people conform to their laws and legal systems. If you get rid of open, if you get rid of borders and have open borders, some cultures will just want to impose on other cultures and you won't be able to establish cultures that are better than others. Okay. So let's talk about these points again, starting with the second point about the borders reflecting differences. Now, the point he's making here is that the, the one I was making here is that the EU has very different cultures and very different governments within the EU, but we still have open borders and we still haven't seen problems with that. I don't really see what the impact of this point is. Borders do reflect differences, sure, but we allow immigration as it stands. Thirdly, he talked about flooding and he gave the, and I gave the example of Micronesia. Now in Micronesia, incomes are 20 times lower than they are in the US. If that's not an incentive to go to the U.S. from Micronesia, I don't know what is. Same things happened in Greece, where incomes are much lower than in Germany. But there isn't a flooding effect. This is empirically denied. This just doesn't happen. This is based on hypotheticals, not on reality. Fourthly, he talks about cultural identity and how people will want to go to different cultures and overwhelm that. Again, we allow this currently with immigration, and it hasn't been a problem in any of the nations that have opened up open borders. We have open borders throughout Europe. We have open borders within our countries, and we haven't seen cultures and identities be destroyed because of it. 
Okay, when you bring up examples of the United States, that's completely different because we're all part of one nation. If you were to example, for example, take Mexico and Cuba, though those systems and government and those cultures are completely different. So your argument here is not going to be unique. Secondly, again, he says that they can be expatriated if they undermine the rule of law. But this isn't necessarily the case because if Mexico doesn't want to do it and the U.S. wants Mexico to expatriate them back, Mexico is in no reason have to comply. If a, if a country with less stringent standard is next to a country with more stringent standards, there's no reason why that country will want to comply. It, it, this will just incentivize criminals to commit crime in one place and then move to another place so they, they won't get caught. Again, he says this plotting principle is empirically denied um, because of the example of Micronesia. However, I'm going to argue that, again, although there are countries in the EU that have this scenario, again, you're going to see much more because they're, we're talking about the entire world having open borders. So, example, if you have, uh, I'll get into this in my next. Okay, let's again talk about these examples, starting with the expatriated point about the undermining the rule of law. Now, what I'm saying here is that currently, if you are a nation, if you're a criminal and you go and be fugitive in another nation, they've got to like send you back. And that wouldn't change with open borders. It already happens and it's not going to change there. Well, my opponents pretty much dropped the point about the differences in the cultural identity, so I'm going to go on with that. What we're talking about now is the example of the flooding. And he gave the example of, Mike, I talked about the example of Micronesia as well as the EU. Now, what I'm saying here is that if we have a bunch of nations where there's vastly different income distinctions, when there's much lower income in the EU, in Greece, versus Germany or in Micronesia versus US, and we don't see flooding, then there's no reason to conclude that there's going to be flooding when we have the whole world on open borders. It's just empirically denied. My opponent is again relying on hypotheticals, not on actual empirical data. Um, can I just ask you a quick question? If there are open borders, what happens to same militaries? They exist. I don't, I don't see the military changing much. I mean, can a military go in and invade another country and would that infringe on sovereignty? Um, no, they can't. That'd be against international law. Okay. So first, about how borders reflect differences, don't create them. The argument here is that people live in a certain country not because that borders create some sort of difference between those two societies, but because the borders actually reflect differences within these cultures. And if you allow people to cross without actually agreeing that they will consent to the laws of a nation, then that will hurt the nations. And again, this is the reason why borders exist and are important. Secondly, in the example of flooding and seesawing, again, he tries to bring up the example of the EU to deny this. But what the argument here is, he says, I don't, I don't have any empirics. But if you logically think about it, if one country is better than another and people have a higher quality of life and it's right next to another as opposed to Micronesia, uh, again, the EU countries are very similar. Um, they have very similar governance structures. There's not going to be this kind of, uh, of, there's going to be a seesaw in which people will want to go to another country. We see this right now with the refugee crisis. People want to go to another country and by inundating that country, you're going to drive it down so that it's not able to accommodate for the citizenry. There's not. Okay, so my opponent again talks about the whole idea that borders reflect differences. But again, this is talking about immigration, not elimination of a nation. People immigrate to other countries all the time. This is not unique to the whole idea of open borders. People are going to move to countries where there are differences, cultural differences, when there are borders there. Secondly, he talks about And what he hasn't done is shown you any empirical examples where this has happened. We have an entire governmental system called the EU in which this occurs, and there hasn't been flooding. We haven't seen this. Even when there is enormous financial crises in Greece, there hasn't been just this flood of immigrants to Germany. We see the same thing with Micronesia in the U.S. My opponent hasn't given you any empirical data. In the contrary, I've given you plenty of empirical data, including the fact that $78 billion would be accrued by the world if we have open borders. This empirical data demonstrates, in fact, that the world would be better with... Okay, you're going to prefer my impacts over the economic impacts because when you have a less safe world, when you have a world that is undermined the rule of law, that actually hurts the economy in the long run. So first, on the example that borders reflect differences, again, the argument here is that, again, things like national defense and things like that will be uh, vastly, uh, will be made extremely hard to accrue. Again, because people in different countries ascribe to a different set of laws and legal standards, if they're able to cross without being scrutinized to see whether or not they actually want to be in that country, that will lead to worse living conditions. 
He says that flooding is empirically denied. But if you look in the EU, it's very easy for terrorists to move from one place to another country if you don't have open borders and there's not the security right there. Again, I'm arguing that there's undermining the rule of law because you can move so easily from one country to another country. People, countries should be able to choose their cultural identities that comprise them so that they've...